if you have an electric car and you want to get as much range as you can at home as quickly as possible or maybe you're in the market for an electric vehicle and you're wondering hey how long does it take to recharge those things in this video i'm going to be reviewing the zappy wall charger and in it i'm going to detail you how much extra range you can expect to get from this per hour and how long it takes you to fill up your car I'm also going to detail how the unit works and how the app works and its integration with solar and a battery. All that and a lot more. G'day, my name's Chris and I cover from an Australian perspective technologies like electric vehicles and more. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. This is version 2 of the My Energy Zappy Wall Charger, commonly known as one of the class leaders in home charging. I'm going to detail exactly why that is soon, but if you want to catch up on how I got to this point and like things to consider, why you might want to not use the included charger that comes with your car, and considerations such as location, what to expect with the installation, costs and more, check out this video as well as perhaps this video to get details on those. We've got the MG ZS EV and soon we'll be getting the Tesla Model Y. So for us, we need a better, faster charging solution. The MG is fundamentally a very basic entry-level electric vehicle. I can't control when I want it to charge. I can't see how, what the state of charge is unless I actually um, turn the, well, have the car in a certain state and uh, try to look at it in a certain way. <laughs> it, it's complicated. MG owners know exactly what I'm talking about here. There is a way around that using an OBD port tool, but yeah, that's a little bit messy and uh, I have never bothered with my car. So the reason I went with this was for primarily that we actually want something that's smarter that I can control anywhere without having to be actually here in the garage. Also, we have solar, so I wanted to fill up the car with pure solar if that was even possible. And we have we have a like 4.5 kilowatt system, but we also have a tester power wall. And to date, uh, we've had our MG for more than 18 months. I've tried to charge it during the daytime if we were home. And uh, then I look outside or I might look at the weather forecast and I try to plan when I will be charging the car so that I do so for free. But it's, it's been haphazard and of late, we've done a lot more traveling and typically 100 to 150 kilometers per day. And using that slow granny charger, I only meant we're getting 10 kilometers of additional range per hour, meaning if you did 150 kilometers, it's gonna take you 15 hours to replenish that range lost. So we absolutely needed a faster charger. When the Zappy charger isn't in use, this is what it should look like. But to be honest, this is, I'm, I'm doing this for the camera. Uh, realistically, it looks more like this with the cable on the ground. And I know, I, it, we shouldn't do that, but I'm equally as guilty as my wife is. And uh, w w when you put it back, uh, it's very easy to actually put this 6.5 meter cord up and over where it's supposed to go. Uh, but it, it's a good sturdy cable. The location of this is nice and central in this garage so that we can charge not only the MG here, but also our future Model Y. I like the look of the unit. It's very neat and tidy. A little bit oh, Apple-esque, I guess, with that white and the gray. Pressing a button or even actually just moving it. I think it's got like a movement sensor in it. Uh, it will activate the LCD screen with the backlight. So even if I had the lights off in here at night time, I could still see what's going on. For those who are, don't have an electric car, my joke is whenever someone asks, how long does it take to recharge your car? It's like literally seconds and what I mean by that is that I take it out here I plug it in there and that's it you walk away you don't stand around like you would at a, few, a petrol station and do this with your hand on a trigger you know the pump waiting for your car to fill up it doesn't work that way you just plug it in set it forget it and yeah it's, it's electric cars are great for the next section I'm going to be going into controlling the zappy both here as well as in the app so I will put chapter markers beneath because well it might get boring for some of you you just want to know how do you charge it and what are your thoughts Chris so please do use them walking around the screen and the buttons top left hand corner you've got the amount of solar coming in right now so it's 0.3 of a kilowatt grid we're using 2.9 3 kilowatts to the house total of 3.2 to 3.3 
One of the fun things I like about the Zappi is that it's got a house with a smile. The house is using no energy whatsoever. If you are using energy, it actually has a flat sort of no smile. Beneath that, you've got a status of whether or not the car is charging, it's stopped, it's waiting. You'll see different messages soon. Date and time down there, what mode it's currently in. So right now the charger is stopped. And then over here, you can see it says 0.68 of a kilowatt has been delivered to the car so far today. Using the hamburger button, that gets you into the menu, is also your back button. Pressing the up or down arrows cycles through the three different charging modes it has, plus the fourth which is stopped, and pressing the other one does vice versa. Pressing the plus jumps into something, so in this case I've just moved into the charge log, so I can go back, or I can go forward, or I can go deeper into it. In my previous two videos, I've talked about the differences between chargers and why some are dumb and some are smart. And this is one of the smart ones. And uh, all right, let's just do dumb charging. So we'll go to fast, and that's gonna try to deliver to the car seven kilowatts of power. People who own MG ZS EVs, uh, the 2021 sort of models, not the newest ones perhaps, this will not know what the percentage of charge your battery is, nor will it show it. In fact, no AC charger can do that. The car will limit and slow down as it fills up the battery, but nonetheless, I don't know how much more energy this car will need. So keep that in mind when I talk to different smart charging modes later on. Right now, the car is actually receiving seven kilowatts of power, and we're drawing now 9.5 from the grid, and it's going to the car. In the app, this is how it looks. Again, 0.3 of that is coming from solar, 2.8 is going to the house, and I can click on the actual icon here for the Zappi, and in the top right hand corner it says 7 kilowatts of power has been delivered to it, and charge added so far is 0.78 of a kilowatt, and we're in fast mode. If I want to change to eco mode, and let's say I'm sitting down inside and uh, the sun comes out, and I think to myself, Actually, I don't need to go somewhere now. Let's get the sun and get it to charge the car. I can shift over to the Eco Plus, and what will happen is it will talk to the um, Zappi charger over here, and you can see now it's changing to Eco Plus. And importantly, there's a countdown of 24, 23, 22 seconds. And what's happening here is it's actually going to uh, pause the charge until it gets at least 1.8 kilowatts of power before it recommences charging the car. In Eco Plus mode, that's purely solar, where actually you can elect what the mix can be. But and, uh, I've set it to, like, I want you to use just solar. And if at least 1.8 kilowatts is coming from your solar array, or even, let's say you elect to use your battery, your uh, whatever battery you've got in your house, it doesn't have to be Tesla, it could be an LG battery, you name it. It will wait for that power to be available before it actually count down again, from 30 seconds to zero before it starts going back to the car. The idea being is that if it's a sunny day with a bit overcast and the cloud covers the sun and your solar panels just aren't getting that 1.8, it will wait for 30 seconds before it recommences and then it will reverse the process as well. It just means you're not gonna be having the car turning on and off unnecessarily. Now that we're in Eco Plus mode, you can see it's telling me it's waiting for surplus and there's a pause and we've now given 0.85 of a kilowatt hour of energy to the car today. I can change in the app to Eco, or I can use the up and down arrows, and now we're gonna to go to Eco. And what that means is that it will blend some grid power with solar power. And uh, if let's say you have only, well, my situation is a good example, we've only got 0.4 of a kilowatt coming in from solar. So it's going to then add to that 1.4 from the grid to give you a guaranteed charge. I think you can go down to as low as 1.3, 1.4, uh, 1.8 being like a magic number that's stuck on my head for some reason. But you get the idea. Instead of essentially being just a fast charger, I think, um, I'll name any other charger you like that's just going to throw as much energy as it can to your car this can um, be sensitive to how much solid you're producing or how much your battery has got and work with what it's given and uh, for that reason I, I love the idea of zappy in fact i love the zappy it's not the idea i've got it it's actually here now that we're in eco mode or eco plus mode this is when we can dive deeper into boost with either manual smart or scheduled charging and one criticism I have of this system is that you can do it through here and you can do it through your app, but it's a little bit like nested. 
and I don't understand why we don't just cycle through all these different modes here and you go from let's say to from eco uh, to boost and then you might go to um, timer or you, you get the idea I'll, I'll better explain it as we go so hang with me in boost settings the charge rate is set to a maximum just like fast mode until a set amount of energy has been stored in the electric vehicle's battery to get that on the actual zappy unit i'm going to press the plus key and you see it says boost. Now I'm predetermined for this setting of 20 kilowatt hours of energy. My battery's almost full by the way, so it's not gonna do 20. But nonetheless, it's now going to be uh, boosting and delivering to the car from 20 down to zero. So it's got 19.98 left, and when it reaches that, it will stop. And that's brilliant, especially for people who own cars that haven't got, uh, let's say, timers in their car or don't have limits in their car as to how much energy you wanna get into. Think MG. Mm. Now that I've done it over on the Zap, you can see inside the app, we are currently boosting. It's in manual mode. You've got the two little arrows there and we've got a slider so we could actually change that setting and, it's, and I can uh, change it in the app as well. The next boost setting is smart and this is to say it's kind of like a timer and it's probably excellent for going away on trips where you want to get your battery to 100% right on departure time. So for this, you tell it that I want in this situation on my phone you can see 25 kilowatt hours of energy and I want to depart at 5.45 a.m. in the morning and what we'll then do is actually do the math and work out oh I need to deliver 5.4 kilowatts of power to the car uh, per hour and that will get us to that magical 25 kilowatt hours by 5.45 in the morning. It's a great uh, way to actually thinking about getting as much range out of your battery as possible and keeping the longevity of the battery as well. And one last mode here is scheduled. And in this situation, because we are on the PowerShop EV plan, we have from 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. a bit over nine cents per kilowatt hour uh, rate. So uh, we aim to charge this car and our future Model Y on that tariff. And so to do that, uh, you can set up either on the Zappy, which I'll show you in a moment in some of the deeper menus, but also simply here on the app, which is easier. Um, you can see I've got from 12.15 in the morning, I want you to charge for one hour and 30 minutes, Monday through Friday. And on the weekend, I want you to uh, do it for two hours, again from 12.15 on Saturday and Sunday. And that just represents that we actually travel more on the weekends. I haven't probably illustrated well the frustration of getting to these manual boost modes and schedule time of things because uh, yeah, it, the app's so much better and I, I just use it. I have seldom actually used the interface here. When I got it on day one, I went through with the uh, electrician to configure it and set it all up and things like that. But I've generally almost always used the app and it's so much simpler. So what I think Zappy could do to improve it is to actually, with these up and down arrows, just cycle through all the six different modes that it has from your basic fast, eco, eco plus to manual, smart and scheduled and then back to stop. That would just make a lot more sense because effectively by pressing this button and getting it into one of those deeper modes that's effectively nested it and uh, it doesn't make sense here and when I first actually got the unit I was a bit frustrated that it wasn't doing a scheduled charge and that was because I actually had the um, Zappy on fast mode. It absolutely has to be in either eco or eco plus mode before it will enable those other smarter charge modes. Does that make sense? And it, and it doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> this is what my, uh, probably realistically, one of my only criticisms of the unit. First up, you've got your charge log. By pressing the plus, you can see what you did yesterday, today, the week, the month, the year in total. So to go back, I'm gonna press the hamburger button and then we're gonna come down to event log. And that's just telling me what is messages today. So uh, nothing exciting going on there whatsoever. Readings, um, this is gonna tell us everything from uh, how much energy it's importing, exporting, and so on and so forth. And I probably should actually talk to the fact that because this does keep logs, it's great for taxation reasons. So if you need to uh, claim kilometers um, and the amount of power you've uh, fed to your car, this is a great way to do that. Information I won't go into because you'll see my serial numbers and other stuff I don't want you to see. Linked devices. 
We've got the Zappi Hub, which is actually uh, enabling from this unit to a unit inside my house, which is then connected to the internet. And hey, I've just discovered my second dislike of the Zappi in that I don't understand why this doesn't have a Wi-Fi chip built into it. And I, I think what's happening is this communicating, I think, either by radio or by Bluetooth to the unit in my hallway. And that unit has to then be plugged in via LAN and uh, so in this case to my Google Home Wi-Fi device to get to the cloud and then to get to my phone. It's a bit clunky and cumbersome and a very unnecessary step. Charge settings, so this is where you can configure things like your Eco Plus, your manual boost, smart boost, boost timers and your default mode. So if I look at the Eco Plus for instance, there's my mix, so 50% green. Uh, I could change that down to, um, let's say, I want it to be always. 100% um, green. Um, the delay, that 30 second safety that it has built into it. And then other settings, uh, you can change your date and time, whether or not you do sounds. And for those who like playing with colors like I do, that's where you play with your RGB lights. And then even deeper settings that probably I shouldn't be playing around with, but you could if you want to. And there's other stuff in there. So I won't bother going into that very much, will I? No. Was my investment in the Zappi charger worth it? And what are my final thoughts? And uh, yes, definitely well worth the investment. Remembering um, this is a feature of the house now. And if I was to sell the place and the next people were like, great, it's gonna let you vehicle charger, tick. Um, for the MG ZSAV, we were putting up with for the last year and a half, the slow grinding charger that came with it. Uh, first a 10 amp, then we got a 15 amp socket. And that was only giving us 10, 15 Ks per hour. For most weekday travel, that was fine, but on the weekend, we were frequently getting in trouble. And so by having this installed, we now get 50 kilometers of range per hour. And what I love about it is, is that I can control it from anywhere I might be with my mobile phone. Heck, I could be even across the other side of the world and I can change the charging of my car. And it, the, the different modes it's got from fast, you know, just a normal, dumb, standard charger through to the smart version, that is to say, give me just solar, give me just battery, or blend the two and only go up to a certain amount. Um, the timers, the MG ZSEV doesn't have a time charge system, so this enables that, and we can really get those cheaper electricity rates through our um, power company. And the fact that, you know, it's got a good six and a half metre reach. Um, it services this garage perfectly. And for all those reasons, bar the little niggle, or the, my complaint rather, with the menu system and how you've got to be the Eco Eco Plus to get into those boost settings. Um, and also the Wi-Fi dongle, whereby why doesn't this just have Wi-Fi built into it? There are my only two complaints about it, but otherwise, I love the look of it. It's, it's smart, it's neat, the light is cool, I like that factor. And, you know, the design actually holds a cable for you, which is, a, again, um, you don't need to have a tie somewhere else. So, yep, I'm really happy that we've actually got this. Now remember, I wasn't sponsored or paid to do this and we actually used our own money to get this installed, but the guys over at Evolution Australia saw the first video about you know selecting one and then the installation. So they, they have got this lovely generous discount here. Just spend $1,000 and you get $100 off on any product that they sell. So do go and check them out. That's like could be a 10% saving for you, which is great. Um, this all up told cost us $2,500 to be installed. 1,000 was for the electrical bill, would have been about $700 actually if we didn't have to do some work on our board over there. Um, and this year was a bit over $1,500 with including the Wi-Fi bit. So well worth it. I'm so glad we've got it now and uh, yeah, it's, it's great. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a subscribe. It's absolutely free and actually helps the channel. I've got car makers from Volvo, Mazda, Tesla, um, Sayak Motors and more who are actually going to be, you know, allow me to give in more great content to you guys. And if you enjoy it, yes, a sub will be really appreciated. But you want to see behind the scenes videos and how long this video actually took me to make, come over here to Patreon where you get behind the scenes, news, polls and stuff that I just don't do here on YouTube. Otherwise, you'll be good and you'll be great. Mm -hmm.